Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Sean's Me Crusades. My name is Sean Wasserkrug, and today we're going to be doing a quick review of the 2020 version of The Invisible Man. Uh, now, for me, when this movie got announced, I was a little uneven about it, mainly because of the the uh, dark uh, Universal Monster reboot that they were trying to do a couple years back that failed miserably. This has nothing to do with that. Um, this is basically its own kind of little separate film. Bloomhouse is behind the film, which they tend to be more on the positive than the negative when it comes to horror films. Uh, but the big thing that really sold me on wanting to see this film is that director Lynn Wanell was directing this film. Uh, many people might know him for writing the very first uh, Saw film, uh, also directing probably one of my favorite films of 2018, Upgrade. Um, so with him at the helm, I knew that this was going to be a different kind of approach to the way the film was going. Plus with the with the uh, main performance going to Elizabeth Moss, who has been killing it lately, especially for anyone who's watched Handmaid's Tale. Uh, so I know we had a great actress behind the helm as well. Um, the film itself is done incredibly well. It really takes a um, deep, dark look in, in domestic abuse, psychological abuse, gaslighting, um, all these factors that what comes in, in an abusive relationship as the main story follows uh, Cecilia, who has been in a relationship with uh, Adrian, uh, who's basically this, like, this billionaire, like ocular tech guy. And uh, she's basically been kind of her his prisoner for the past three years. And she finally grows up the courage to basically run away from him. And in the process, she, she gets away, but then she finds out two weeks later that Adrian has killed himself. Um, thinking that she's finally, you know, free of, of, of his grasp, she starts feeling like she's being followed. Certain things are happening to her that she didn't do, or certain things are happening to her that only he would be able to do. And thus the real cat and mouse game begins. Uh, the psychological horror in this film is, is at a, at, at a very, very maximum. Um, it's very tense from literally the first shot to the end. You are on the edge of your seat. You're consistently holding your breath. Um, I wouldn't say there are necessarily jump scares in this film. This is very more of a a um, psychological scary film with the thought process of someone who has been in a situation like Cecilia has, uh, who would definitely know what it's like to feel in that in in that presence. And the main thing that Elizabeth Moss and Lynn. Uh, do as as a director is they put you in that same position with cecilia if you have never been in a relationship like this this movie does a very good job of making you feel what it feels like to be in something like that uh and the way elizabeth moss um delivers that performance is easily the best performance of the year so far even though it is uh still february um this is one of those performances that i feel will last through the rest of the year kind of like how uh lupita Nyong'o's uh performance of us was um for people who it, it's got it's got a pretty solid cast uh surrounding her as well but it literally rides on the shoulders of elizabeth moss um oliver jackson cohen he plays adrian he for the most part doesn't have a lot of speaking or physical like face roles because he's playing the invisible man but uh when he is on screen he does a pretty good job for people who love the haunting of hill house you guys will know where he's from uh harriet dyer plays Cecilia's sister Emily, she's pretty solid in her scenes. Uh, Aldous Hodge and Storm Reed, they basically play um, uh, James and Sydney Laner. Uh, James is a, is a childhood friend of Cecilia, where she, that's where she goes to hide when she gets away from Adrian and uh, Storm plays Sydney, uh, James's daughter. Uh, they are they do a very good job as well, um, basically being that emotional support for Cecilia. And the and the big thing about this film that makes you kind of go with everyone and on the on this horrific journey is that you gotta like the characters around her as well and and hope that they are safe in terms of what is going on but also seeing them crack as well because they don't believe cecilia and what cecilia is you know having done to her but the horror of this film is done incredibly well like i said it leaves you on the edge of your seat it leaves you holding your breath um all the way up till the end there are twists and turns along the way some work some don't um but from beginning to end, A Visible Man does an incredibly great job at leaving you in suspense. Uh, I wouldn't say it's a very fun movie to watch, because, especially for people who have been in this kind of a situation, not in terms of being haunt, haunted by a visible man, but just a, an abusive relationship, personally. 
Um, it's it's something that may be uneasy for certain people to watch. For, for the people who want to see a modern day version of the Invisible Man that isn't Kevin Bacon's Hollow Man, uh, I feel like Invisible Man does a great job of delivering the suspense and horror capable of what this character can can do. And um, Lynn does a fantastic job, or uh, Lee Lee One L, sorry, um, does a, a great job directing this. And I can't wait to see what he has up his sleeve. So I would definitely strongly recommend uh, The Invisible Man for anyone who really wants to go out there and see a good horror film, because most of the horror films that have come out this year have been trash so far um but i'm going to be giving invisible man an 8.5 out of 10 uh if you guys want a little bit more detail on the review i i'm going to delve a little bit deeper into it in a longer review so feel free to check that out uh and until next time in case i don't see you good morning good afternoon and good night movie crusaders <laughs>